Mel Robbins is one of the most booked speakers in the world and an international best-selling author whose work has been translated into 32 languages. She went from being an unemployed 41-year-old facing bankruptcy to impacting millions of people through her books, speeches, and coaching sessions. And today we're gonna to learn her best advice on why you should go easier on yourself. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and every morning I bring you a shot of Espresso to help you believe in yourself more and start your day with confidence. So good morning, I believe in you, and let's do this. Over to you, Mel Robbins. The world doesn't need another perfect person. The world needs you. And you're trying your best. You're doing what you can. And, you know, I think it's really important that you cut yourself a break and that you stop thinking that you have to be perfect. There are going to be days where you're an hour late to pick up your kid, and that's okay. There are going to be days when you can't get to every email, and that's okay. There are going to be days where you feel so underwater, and that's okay. You'll get through it. You'll figure it out. And you've got to understand that it's not about being perfect. It's about just being you. And that means that you got to be willing to start before you're ready. You got to be willing to do what I do every damn day, which is show up in my rollers or start a live stream and disconnect myself or start it and be talking and not even know that I'm broadcasting. You've got to do that version in your life or you're not going to get ahead, period. 95% of the time, you should not cut yourself a break. 95% of the time, what you actually need to do is push harder, grow stronger, and show yourself what you're capable of. And 5% of the time, you need to be more gentle on yourself. How do you decide which path to take? When you're proud of the reason why you're not taking action. So let's use this channel as an example. Uh, there was two weeks where I was not posting videos on this channel, new videos. We were throwing some archive footage together because a video has to go up on the channel. But there were two weeks where I wasn't recording new content for this channel. Why? Well, I record normally on a Tuesday. I don't know when this video is going up, but I record my videos on Tuesdays. And for two Tuesdays in a row, we were dealing with some family issues. Um, a member of our family is struggling with cancer and we spent the day being with that person and helping it and trying to be a support system and taking care of things that they needed to kind of have done for them, for their comfort, for their convenience, for their life. And that meant I couldn't film. And that was a no brainer, easy decision for me. I've been super consistent on making content. And if it was that I was tired or that I was hungry or that I had no internet or that my camera was broken or all the other you know lists of reasons, AKA excuses why I couldn't make content, those are not good enough reasons. I'm not proud of myself. Like the filter you have to run your decisions through is, am I proud of myself for why I'm not following through? When you don't hit your goals, it doesn't matter what somebody else thinks about you. This is an inside game. This is how you feel about yourself when you are alone. Can you honestly say that you are proud of yourself for the reasons why you did not take the action you said you were going to do? And 95% of the time, it's no, you're not proud of yourself. So what do you have to do? You show up. But with this channel, I've gone through a lot, right? I've broken my neck and made videos. I've been super tired, I've made videos. You know, I've, I've made videos through a lot of different uh, technical issues, crisis issues, personal struggles. I've made videos throughout. But I didn't for those two weeks because I was with our family member and I felt I'm proud of myself. Like I, I would rather be with them than make videos because I felt like I would regret it otherwise. I would, I would regret not being with them and filming videos just because I said I was going to make videos, right? So that's the tricky part because when you go to somebody else and ask them for their opinion, should I do this or should I do this? Their opinion doesn't matter. You're just looking for validation. What really matters is what you think about yourself. So many of you have been super understanding. Uh, I think everybody has been actually very, very understanding that I wasn't making content. But if somebody posted to say, hey, you, you know, you committed, you said you were going to do this, you're being inconsistent, I, I, it doesn't matter. I don't care about your opinion because I'm proud of the reason why I didn't follow through on the goal. 
So I think most of the time, 95% of the time, you need to push harder. You need to grow stronger. You need to show yourself what you're made of. It's in those times when it doesn't work out. It's in those times when your camera breaks and you need to go to your cell phone or go to a friend's house and borrow their cell phone. When you have no internet and you need to still make it, when you're feeling low energy, sluggish, tired, sick, broken neck and still making videos. It's in those moments that you actually build self-love, self-respect, self-confidence. It's from doing the difficult things. You don't want to teach yourself that life gets hard and I play small and life gets hard and I play small and life gets hard. And guess what? I'm going to play small because that's the cycle that too many people have created themselves in a loop over and over and over again. When life gets hard, you show up. That's what leaders do. Leading other people and leading yourself. But in those rare moments, when there's a legit reason for you to not follow through and feel proud of the reason why, then you need to be more gentle on yourself. I think that's fantastic. Okay, so how do you do it? How do you make that judgment call? I've got a three-step process I'm gonna walk you through. But before that, if you wanna have unstoppable confidence and motivation, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. I'm about to change your life because this piece of research changed mine. I know that everybody's problem comes down to one pattern you're repeating that you can't see. If you're still saying that to yourself over and over and over again and you're complaining, it's what you're really good at is ignoring your gut. And so it's time to start tuning into your gut and making some changes. Okay, so how do we make the judgment call if we should go harder or be more gentle? Is it the 95% of time to go rough on ourselves and build our self-confidence or the 5% of the time where we actually have to be more gentle because we're part of the reason? Three steps, let's go. Step number one is ask yourself if you're proud. And again, it's not asking somebody else what their opinion is. It doesn't matter what I think of you, what your parents, or your boyfriend or girlfriend, or husband or wife, or kids or friends, doesn't matter. What do you think of yourself? So when I stopped filming for two weeks on this channel, I'm okay with it. I'm proud of my reason why. Whether my wife agrees with me or not, whether my video edit team agrees with me or not, my viewers agree with me or not, I'm okay with it. It's a question to ask to myself. I am proud of the reason why I left. That thing, that habit that you started, that you want to stay consistent on, that you dropped off, the reason why you dropped off, why? Ask yourself when you're alone, by yourself, meditate, be, be away from your computer and any other distractions. Ask yourself, legit, honest, time to get to the core. Are you proud of the reason why you didn't show up for that thing? Yes or no? Step number two is if it's yes, you're proud of the reason why, then be gentle. Then give yourself a break. Then say it's okay. I'm, I'm struggling with this thing. I, I, I'm, I'm going to find another way to bounce back. I will recover, right? For my channel, we found ways to show videos from the archive and now I'm back to filming my regular schedule. I hope you guys miss me, let's go. You know, th th there's always another day to showcase what you are made of, to be able to make the results that you're trying to go off and get. So that's the, that's the self top of not then sabotaging, of not then piling on top of uh, the suffering on top of yourself to say, it's okay, this is my time. I need to be gentle on myself now. It's okay, because I'm proud of the reason why. And step number three is if you're not proud of the reason, then you have to show up even more because you're starting to train a really vicious cycle of, again, it's difficult, and so I don't show up. It's difficult, so I don't show up. That needs to be destroyed. That needs to be eliminated. It needs to be cut out from your vocabulary that when it's difficult, therefore I must show up. So if you're not proud of the reason why, for me at least, it's not good enough to just show up again the next day. You have to show up extra. You gotta do twice as much. You gotta show yourself and prove to yourself that this is not who you are anymore. You wanna make a big change in your life. It comes from changing your standards of what you accept as behavior from yourself when other people will let you off the hook. You have to raise your game and raise that level of, I will follow through when it gets difficult. And if I let myself down, I'm showing up twice as hard the next day. At least that's me. So for you, if it's a no, you're not proud of why you didn't show up yesterday or today on something. How can you show up 150% the next day? How can you show up 150% effort, time, dedication to show yourself, to let it not be acceptable that you did not show up when you said you would and you're not proud of the reason why. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and how are you gonna take action on it this week?
When you schedule in what day, what time, and what place you're gonna take action, you have a 91% chance of actually following through versus just a 35% chance of following through if you got motivated but never wrote down a specific plan. And when you share your plan and have accountability, you're even more likely to follow through. So in the comments below on this video right here, I want you to write down your single biggest takeaway as well as your plan of action for the next week. Take a bit of a look at yourself and think about what's not so good that you could improve, that you should improve by your own standards and that you would improve, you know, and set yourself a little goal. Um, you know, maybe you're not studying at all at, at, at your university, or maybe you're maybe you're at work and you've got this stack of paper there, you know, and you haven't looked at that damn stack for like a month, and you know that you should be, and you're bo bothering yourself at night because you're avoiding that. It's like maybe you think, well, I've avoided that stack of paper completely for one month. I'm quite a coward when it comes to whatever snakes might be hidden in that stack of paper. How about tomorrow? I just like put that stack of paper in front of me on my desk and I like I glance through it for 15 seconds. See if I can do that. It's like, well, you set yourself a goal of improvement. You know, it's a humble goal because really are you such a coward that the best that you can bloody well manage after a month of avoidance is 15 seconds of exposure to a stack of paper? You know, it could easily be. You've been avoiding it. So you're obviously afraid of it. And so the situation could be that dismal and dire. And you might think, well, geez, it's no bomb to my ego. It's no, it's, it's no, it's not fostering the, the strength of my ego to recognize myself, someone who could only withstand 15 seconds of exposure to that thing I'm afraid of. And so that's a form of humility too. It's like, there's things you could do to improve and you know what they are. And there's small steps that you could take that you might take that would put you in that direction. And then the question is, are you big enough to take those small steps? You know, are you capable of grappling with the fact that you're fundamentally flawed to the point where you have to break things down into almost childlike steps in order to manage them? And the answer to that is, yeah, you are. And that's the lot of, I don't know if it's a lot of everyone. Most people have things they avoid, you know, and they're afraid of. So I would say to some degree, it's the lot of everyone. People vary in the degree to which they've conquered that. And you do meet people from time to time who are extraordinarily disciplined. But most of the time, they've got disciplined in exactly this manner. It's through slow incremental improvement. And then you challenge yourself. It's like, well, could I do this? That would be better. And then you find out and then you think, well, is there something slightly larger and more challenging that I could do that would be better? And, and you try it and you find out. And as you try it and you find out, generally you get better at it and you can take on larger and larger challenges. If you want to change your life in 30 days, check out my free training below. Or if you want to learn how to speak up like Mel Robbins, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy them. Continue to believe. I'll see you there.